Hi, this is really Big Daddy Bo, two-time former world heavyweight champion, and you're watching Cool True Sports. <laughs> True School Sports. True School Sports. There you go, champ. Thank you. All right, Brennan Taylor here, True School Sports. I'm with the man himself, the international boxing businessman, Rick Laser. What's up, Rick? Not much, Brennan. Just uh, happy to be on your show again, and uh, for all your viewers, and uh, it's you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to be on your show. And, you know, I, I I enjoy doing these podcasts, and um, you know, all the videos and stuff, especially with all this downtime with this uh, coronavirus shutdown going on. It's, I get this stuff to look forward to every day. Because if not, I don't have anything to look forward to every day. So it's uh. It's great, you know. I mean, if it wasn't for Twitter and Facebook, I'd I'd probably go stir crazy right about now. Yeah, you'd probably you'd probably be driving your wife even more insane than than you already do. Oh my God, you kidding me or what? Yeah, I start talking to her for five minutes. She says, "Go into the room and play on Twitter." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, let's 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 get into it, man. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on the uh, Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury rematch. What did what did you make of that night in February? Okay, well, let me just ask you a question. What did I tell you all along? Told me that Tyson Fury was gonna win. No, uh, I told no, but I also told you what's his name was a fraud too. Uh, Wilder, uh, yeah, Wilder. you 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 you've been saying since 2018 when we first started doing these interviews that uh Wilder can't fight with a lick. Those are your words. No, no, I can't fight a lick. He, um, you know, I said it on another person's talk show. I said, Deontay Wilder is a fig- has been a figment of Al Heyman's imagination. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happened. I mean, you know, you talk to guys like uh, our mutual friend Stacy McKinley. Yep. And, you know, people like that. Everybody knows he can't fight. You can see he can't fight. This isn't rocket science. When your nephew, who's 28 years old, who never had gloves on, okay, suburban kid, never been in a fight in his life, and he says, you're right, the guy can't fight. I can see he can't fight. What, are they, what, are they, what kind of shit is this? There's that way champ in the world. They laugh. I mean, my wife can see, right? The guy can't fight. I mean, people, you know, it doesn't take a a boxing insider or a trainer or somebody with expertise to see the guy couldn't fight. The the common guy sitting at home thinks he can't fight. And that's a scary thought. The guy was the heavyweight champ. You know, it just shows you, you know, how manipulated, they, they, you know, how maneuvered, I'm sorry, how maneuvered um, he was. And, uh, you know, he, like I said, he was a figment of Al Heyman's imagination. That's the only thing you can say. But how how good is Tyson Fury? Um, Tyson Fury would be, would be Joshua. The Tyson Fury right now, at, at his peak right now, would be Joshua. He's, he boxes too well. His jab is too good. His ring IQ is superior. Um, he's got a huge heart. And he's got something that we know Joshua doesn't have. Okay, there's no question about that, and that is recuperative powers. Yes, uh, just like Larry Holmes had great recuperative powers when he was at the height of his career. Yeah, um, Fury has that. We saw that in the first Wilder fight when he was down in the deck twice. I mean, the last now, they were counting him out the last time, and he got up. I mean, he just literally got up, and you know, it looked like he, he looked like he was dead, and then he, and he like he was rising from a casket, you know, and then boom. You know, it's like going to a going to a funeral. You know, the 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 the, 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 the you know, lay the guy out, and you look at the casket, and all of a sudden you turn around, oh shit, the guy's standing up. Yeah, all That's of a sudden he life. just he he gets rises from the dead. Yeah, he rose from the dead, and then um and, and you know he he has tremendous recuperative powers, and he's got tremendous uh, resolve to succeed. And that's something that a lot of fighters don't have. And I will explain to you why they don't have it. Okay. Because, and this is interesting, you have a guy who's made a bunch of money, like a, like a, like a wild, like a, um, like a Joshua, where he's getting such massive amounts of money per fight. And he, and you lose that desire to dig in when the going gets rough, when you're super rich. Now, if it happens early in your career, before you're wealthy, tremendously wealthy, or early in your title reign, then you'd say, you know, okay, I'm going to dig in. 
But this is the mentality of some. They, were, they, 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 they grew up poor. They have, you know, 35, 40 million in the bank. And they should say, Jesus, I want to live to, live, live to enjoy this money. And they just don't give it a thousand percent once the going gets rough. They're, you know, they're what I call a front runner. So if everything is good in the fight. They look great. As soon as the, the going gets rough, they, they don't look too good and they bail. And it's happened many times. Now, that wasn't the case with Wilder. He just plain got the, got, you know, got the snot beat out of him. I mean, it was like, that was ugly. I knew going in the Fury was going to win. Okay? But... I never dreamed it would be that one-sided. I thought along the way he'd win, um, he'd stop him late, you know, the 10th, 11th round, or he'd win a decision. You know, like, you know, one of those, you know, 8-4, to four, you know, 116-112. One, one yeah, yeah, back and forth. Not, not, yeah, BS, yeah, well, both guys had a little momentum. There was no momentum in that fight at all for Fury, um, um, none at all. Now, here, this is interesting. Okay, and there's going to be a third fight. Now, there won't be a third fight this year because they can't, without that $17 million gate from the first fight, they can't do that fight this year. Okay, that's number one. You can forget it. You can, everybody can, can can forget it. October third. That won't happen if if they're not allowing people in the arenas. If they are allowing people in the arenas, then it may happen. We have a recession, so you're not going to have this. And, and Vegas is shut down. Not not people aren't going to be running to Vegas. We're in a recession, and you know what? Recession counts in pay per view. You're going to lose 15 percent of your buyers of pay per view uh, in a recession, and that's been proven in the past. So, it, 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 unless the fighters are both going to take a lot of money less per per guy, and it, it doesn't make any sense because by the time Wilder was to take less, he might as well take step aside money. And go fight somebody for for three or four million, get ten million step aside, and go let Joshua fight. Um, uh, you know, Joshua up. fight uh, Fury, Fury, and then and then the winner gets guaranteed a Wilder fight. Uh, you know, I mean, sorry, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Wilder would get after uh, two shots at the apple with those guys. Wilder would have two wins, you know, getting three, four million a fight. And then uh, the, and getting this ten million dollars step aside, and then let them fight. Then let them come back, and then fight and get them, give them a guaranteed purse to act when it happens. That's what I would do. Yeah, but that sounds the sensible. Problem is, that's what. That sounds a lot more sensible than what they're trying to do. You know, just go straight into a third um, fight. It, it's just it, it makes no it, it makes no sense to go right to a third fight. He he's gonna get the snap beat out of him again. No, okay. I mean, just played with. We've already seen that he can't beat this guy. They remember one thing. They fought 24 rounds, and realistically, the other guys really only won two rounds with the two knockdowns in the first fight in two different rounds. He didn't win any of the rounds. That was a robbery. That was a very bad decision. That was a horrible decision. Yeah, it was piss, but it was piss poor. In, 20, in 24 rounds, he's only won two rounds, realistically. So what does that tell you? He can't beat him. It's not happening. This guy... Fury has um, Muhammad Ali tendencies. He can, he got a great jab when he uses it, okay, and he does use it. He's got the reach, the height, he's got great mobility, even though he looks awkward. If you look at him, he looks awkward, but he does, he gets the job done, okay? He's got great ring sense. He knows when to hold. He knows when to pull the guy's head down. He knows what he's doing at all times. He's in complete control of himself mentally and physically and that's very rare because that's a that's, that combination normally a guy's got physical attributes and not mental or mental attributes and not physical like Ali had both Sugar Ray Leonard had both I'm, I'm talking about all weight classes certain fighters have that and certain fighters don't and he has that ability and you know he's just gonna I think he stops it if the fight does happen whenever it does happen he will stop him quicker in the next fight than he did in this fight this is Chick Shane Mosley, and you're watching True School Sports. All right.